Always remember that the internet is generic, right? It's a wonderful, it has universal access, anybody can post, we're at the barrier to posting, which means there's lots of garbage on the internet. There's tons of stuff that's, that's false, that's ridiculous, that's whatever. So students need to be skeptical about everything. Now you can find them good content, but those MOOCs, those guys at Yale, they're generic. They don't know your students. Now at Biola, at a Christian university, you have a unique, pers a unique perspective in the way that you look at the world. That is something students are coming to you for. So you may want to teach covalent bonds or, or biology or psychology with a unique lens and perspective. You'll have more time to do that if you're not covering the other kind of generic content yourself. So if, the, if a students are using generic content out there, you can then have them think, well, what is unique to, to our perspective here at Biola? What, what is unique about the way that we look at the world that was not considered by that guy at Harvard in edX? Or that guy at MA, MIT was talking about computer science and about code. Are there other examples of that that we might think of as Bible readers that he might not think of? Are our examples different? Because lots of us teach through example, right? And most of us use the same kinds of examples over and over again. This is a problem for students because if the student knows my example, so if I give baseball analogies in my math class all the time or my physics class and you play baseball, you love me. If I give fashion examples all the time in my math class, you, you may not know what I'm talking about. But the other kid who didn't like the baseball, so. Technology allows you to be multivalent, to talk about different perspectives at once. And so there are lots of podcasts, and you may find lots of content that has different kinds of examples. You can also find different kinds of languages. Utavesidad is a Spanish language website, so students who are native, they want to learn about Hegel, but they want to hear about it in Spanish or want to learn about psychology, they can get content in other languages. Again, the internet does it all at once. It does it all at once, it does it generically, but it's not personal to Biola students. You do that. So think about assignments that you might make for students where they bring their unique perspective as Christians to everything they do. That's gonna add value to your students and your parents because what you do is unique. They can't get that at Yale. They can learn about chemistry, but they can't apply it to their lives as Christians in the way that you can. And that's what class time is for. And so it's that combination of how do I use technology? How do I use this content? But how do I personalize and customize? So think about an assignment that you give where you now might be able to give students, again, maybe the entry point is how do you think about this as a Christian? How do you think about this in your life? How does this matter to you? And then here's the content. And then the writing assignment that you bring to class is, is then a critique of this from a Christian perspective that then comes back to your classroom, and, but you've used some content. So thinking about how all of those things kind of work together gives you the, a, a little unit of course design. So the teaching naked cycle involves thinking about course design as a, as, a, as a series of activities. And what teachers get paid to do is think about sequence, right? You're not paid to know lots of stuff. Yes, you have, that's a, that's a prerequisite, but it's not enough. You have to know how students learn. So psychology is gonna become more important. I often say psychology is the new pedagogy. What is the 18 year old mind like? That is, that is your now other area of expertise. So you start with, an email to find the entry point, to prepare students for the writing. What is your unique perspective? Then you have them read something, content, that could happen digitally, it could happen online, it could be reading, but it could be a video. Then they have an exam before every class where you're answering questions. You get a little diagnostic work, you figure out what worked, what didn't work, you get to prepare for class. Then they have writing up before every class, or they have an assignment, some kind of prep where they're doing something to show what they've learned, to think about, to process to put a unique perspective on it. Then they bring it to class. Class becomes the crucible for challenge. It becomes a unique place where you come together as a Christian community and you look at this environment, you think, aha, this is what we can make out of this. This is where we have problems. This is where our community, something that's not gonna happen at Harvard or other institutions. And then you have e-communication to reinforce, which means that, that social media gives you another bite at the apple as we talked before, allows you to connect with students outside of class when they're not in class. But it also means you can have a chance to demonstrate what it means to be thoughtful. In our society, people are not thoughtful. We live in an instant gratification society. So you just, you're going to the Super Bowl. What do you think? Tell me right this second. And, and right, that cornerback in Seattle didn't say, you know what, I'm a little amped up right now. I probably should think about it and get back to you. 
But that's exactly what you can do as a teacher. You can model that thoughtful Christians, thoughtful thinkers, get new information and think, I have to process that. I don't know yet. I may have to do some more research on the internet. You asked me a great question. You may have changed my mind. You may have given me a new way to think about that, but I'll have to think about it. I'll email everybody later. I'll post on Canvas later. I'll post another thought that I have, but I'm not gonna answer now because I'm not sure of my answer. I need to think a little more. E-communication allows you to do that and you couldn't do it before. I mean, you can send an email, email still works, but you didn't have as much contact with your students outside of class. So that's the cycle that I propose for helping, for thinking about what do I do before class, what do I do in class, what do I do after class, and then it starts all over again. And the big news about the internet is that it made the content that you have to tell students less valuable because there are other people who can do that. The good news about the internet is that it made the thinking that you're teaching students more valuable. Thinking how to analyze, how to explain, how to understand, how to synthesize, those things just became more valuable. It's also what employers want. The number one things that employers want, according to a new heart research study, is ethics. That, that's more important than what your major is, that when I hire you, I wanna know about your ethics. I would think that Biola is well-placed to say, our students are going to be ethical in the workplace when they graduate. That's unique about our product, right? So in order for that to be true, it has to be something you do in the classroom. It can't just be something you talk about. Well, we assume you're a Christian, you must, right? No, it has to be something you actually build into the classroom. What does it mean to be a Christian in this situation? You're at work, this just happened. You're a pharmacist, this just happened. You're a nurse, this, whatever. Let's talk about what that means, what, you're, what ethical perspective you're gonna bring. If you do that in every class across the board, that will give your students a unique edge, not only in life as human beings, but also in the marketplace for jobs, because that is what employers say they want. So one thing you might think about is what are the other unique perspectives that Biola students are getting from their faculty? If I'm thinking about where to send my child to school, what unique things will they learn? Obviously, you have, there's a unique set of values, but what other things? What things will happen in the classroom? What kind of learning will happen that's unique to a Christian university, that's unique to your students, that is value that the internet can't match. It's unique to your place, to your mission, to your students, and it'll always be worth the extra money that it's always gonna cost to have students together in a campus. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.